computer. Recording has begun, and I am thrilled to say a big jambo, fellow adventurers, friends far and wide. <coughs> Excuse me, just getting over a little cold. Here you go. <laughs> um, very thrilled and excited to be spending the next hour with truly a woman who has become one of my all-time best friends this lifetime and probably other lifetimes as well. We've known each other for, Nikki, eight years, seven? At least, at least eight years, yeah. Not like 80 years, but <laughs> uh, uh, it's been a, a great friendship and I continue to be in awe and learn from this friend, a person who has a lot to teach, a lot to teach at a very, very human level. And I think you'll get that right away. She, you can't fake what Nikki has to offer. Um, we are speaking of none other than, you see her beautiful face in front of you, Nikki Pattinson, right now in Yorkshire, United Kingdom. Ta-da! Where, where it is midnight. I know, you know, I did think about putting my pajamas on, but I think you've got a bit too much of a genteel audience, Michael, for me to sit here in my pajamas this evening, so I did get dressed. Well, well, we're grateful that at least from the waist up, you, you've got clothes on, so. So, no worries. Um, Nikki, you and I, as everybody watching knows, uh, are going to host our first webinar next month, three, I believe, Wednesday nights in a row, but the details are at tut.com. And you are going to spend most of that time as I host you and guide you with a few questions or guide all of us through your wisdom with a few questions here and there on the topic of relationships <coughs> and they're just it's so obvious they're fundamental essence need and importance in all of our lives and just on a side note as i was sharing with you nikki i'll share with others uh, i just flew home two nights ago from kripalu yoga center had a fabulous time at an amazing yoga retreat where i was a guest speaker and wouldn't you know it I know there's a spiritual cause for everything including this but I caught a cold and I uh, came home to an empty house because my wife and baby are in Mexico where we wanted them to be while I was traveling because tomorrow I'm headed off to Europe for three weeks so I came home with a cold to an empty house and felt pretty miserable and um, I don't know if I've ever felt so alone in my whole life as I did the last uh, 36 hours. And it's a weird, funny thing to admit as a, a very mature, world-savvy guy um, that, you know, without people, without loved ones, um, we're not much. Uh, and, and there's not much worth anything. And Nikki's message uh, applies to family. It applies to friends. It applies to romance. It applies to business. It's about discovering and honoring your sacred self and realizing that you are worthy of whatever your heart desires and with some inside tips and tools on how to make connections that are meaningful and that last. So whatever it is, whatever area of life right now you have where you'd like to bring in change and transformation, um, people, other people will be at the crux of your transformation. And that's uh, in as few words as possible, points to the importance of the topic tonight. Nikki, I'm going to let you talk finally. I'm sure they're like, get over it, Mike. Um, <laughs> uh, Nikki, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Just a, a, little, um, a little resume here, uh, bio, and, and why you are the expert at what you're doing. How did you get to even be in this place where, where you are a consulted by uh, corporations in Europe, uh, individuals far and wide, and on platforms the world over. Mike, I have to say, nobody's more surprised than me. You know, I, I am absolutely shocked as what, at what has happened to me. So first of all, everybody, I, I'm actually numerologically dyslexic, so I can't count. I'm really not very academic. So I had to make me, me life in another way, I guess. Um, so I was always told that I were really stupid at school because I couldn't count and I had this kind of 
I've known you for a million years demeanor. And even then, I knew it was wrong to, te to be any other way with people. Even as a child, I knew that the best thing to do was to treat people like you'd known them for a long time. And uh, on my first job, actually, I started working in a shoe shop and I sold more shoes in one day than anybody else could sell in a whole week. I had no clue how I were doing it. Absolutely no clue at all. Um, and during my 20s, you know, I, and you probably see a lot, seen on my CV that I've done a lot of selling. So I'd go to these companies having no clue what it was that I was selling. I had no idea what design was or training products were or insurance. I did it all by creating very quick with relationships with people. But again, I didn't realize there was a formula and I, I didn't really know what I was doing. And when I was 29, and um, a few of you will uh, relate to this, I met the man who would very soon become my lovely ex-husband. And uh, no such thing as a chance meeting, girls. And we, my whole life changed at that pivotal moment. And we bought a market stall business selling cakes and biscuits, cookies and cakes in Huddersfield Market Stall. It was turning over a thousand pounds a week. Within two years, we'd created such profound relationships with the customers because it was nothing to do with the stock. We were 10% more expensive than anybody else. We were turning over nearly two million pounds a year. That's a lot of money now, but 20 years ago, oh my God. Um, and shortly after that became, came my time of demise. And blimey, did I need people then. Within three or four years, um, my little boy had died negligence at nursery. My mother had passed away. My husband, well, let's just say he'd gone and so had the money. And I regret nothing in my life, absolutely. I just want to make that point. And then my father died. And um, because of my husband's debts, me and my second little boy, who was four at that time, ended up in a two-up and one down, rented house with nothing, no car, nothing. And I'm sure a lot of you will recognize that when you have a pivotal moment in your life, when you walk through a portal where there's no turning back and going back to where you were, a lot of the people that you had around you disappear because their life is different. I didn't have a job. Talk about being lonely, Mike. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have anything to belong to. And I had to start again from nothing and somebody gave me a chance in a design agency and um, again no such thing as a chance meeting and again my whole life changed I remember the first day at the design agency propaganda in Home Firth just down the road here and all I had was a list of names we didn't even have email it was letters in those days and a telephone and I had to modify what I learned on the markets reapply it to cold calling and writing to people and going and meeting people and creating a big enough connection to get them to work with our company. Um, and I did quarter of a million quids worth of business in six weeks and a million pounds in a year. And that was it. That's when I started. And I started to put a formula around what happened when I was meeting those people. And it's absolutely finite now. I know every wink of the eye, every wave of the hand. So that's it basically. Now, as Mike says, I do. I travel all around and thank you, God. And I work in everywhere from supermarkets to law firms. And even, <coughs> and this is an interesting one, even with very young people who Facebook, tweet and text. But when you ask them to walk up and just start talking to somebody that they don't know, they kind of fall to pieces a little bit. So that's what I do. And thank God for every little step along the way. Amazing story, Nikki. I'm always amazed to hear it. And uh, I can hardly imagine what you went through. Uh, I have a little cold and it seems like the end of the world. <laughs> um, it's amazing how these these times uh, that seem to almost break us can uh, launch us into higher, better, farther than we even knew to ask uh, the universe 
prior to. And I know that I have my story that I, I tell uh, here, there, and everywhere. So I won't go into that now, about 15 years ago when I was starting over. But, but through my uh, crash and burn, or seeming crash and burn, or training is maybe a better word, you know, I realized that uh, I stumbled upon what I now teach. Uh, I pulled myself out of it with general end results, getting excited about the details not attaching, and showing up taking action, turning all else over to the universe. So we're curious now, Nikki, when it comes to finding traction in the world around us, which will primarily come through relationships, what are some of the initial tricks or tools or, or steps that you've synthesized from the process that you've developed in, in your sales, your cold calling, your ability to sell ashes to the devil? <laughs> How would you quantify that to begin well, with? Well, I'm going to write that one down <laughs> to the devil. We'll have that one, Michael. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I think that everybody, I'm going to make the point because I'm sure everybody saw that. Both of us are saying the same thing. We're both saying that what was seemingly a demise defined us. And that becomes part of our expression, who we are. And I don't think that either of us would be who we are, doing what we're doing, without the so-called demise. So, you know, I just want to make that, that really clear. Um, so where to start? Uh, well, how you frame, position, or explain yourself defines how, determines how people perceive you. And how people perceive you will determine what people do next. So whether people engage with you or whether people don't engage with you. So the first thing that I would say is you have to find out who you are. And I'm not talking about, sorry, I get a little bit uh, enthusiastic, but I, and I'm not talking about who you were told you were. You have to find out, you have to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I really? In your darkest nights and your sunniest days, who is the person that is inside? And on those nights where, you know, I went the two up and one down, rented out with my son upstairs, I actually went through this exercise because before we start to express ourselves, we've got to find out who the real you is. So I just got a sheet of paper and I wrote down on the left hand side of it everything I'd ever been told about myself that I've got this ridiculous Yorkshire accent, that I was too noisy, that, you know, my demeanor was wrong, I was stupid. And I started to write it all down. And then I looked to see where those words came from. And the point is, you will see the same thing as me, that it's actually not your rubbish. It's the person saying it. It's got nothing to do with you. And most of the things you told about yourself are not true. So I literally tore it all up and burnt it. And that sounds crazy, but somehow... The insecurity of what I've been told about myself seemed to go away on the DNA. So then I had to write a list of, um, of who I was. And I thought, well, you know what? I've got through all this. Maybe I'm not that stupid. So I started to write who I was and what had got me moving forward in my life, what had actually given me the joy in my life. And that was the humour. It was the fact I was from Yorkshire. It was the fact that I liked to meet new people and would just walk up to them and speak to them, even though in those days, socially, it wasn't always acceptable. And um, you know what? I, it was quite an incredible exercise because I found out that night that actually Nikki was kind of all right and we went from there. Wow, that's beautiful. Okay, so then what? What's the next step? You've made a list, or you're suggesting everybody here make a list. I know I'm going to, of at least all the things that we believe to be true of ourselves, that we love about ourselves, that things that, that make us smile. And perhaps the, the first list everyone should make is the one that other people have told us that we, that we don't need to serve anymore. After getting clear on who we really are, you then find out where you want to be in life. So I started to make another list. And I'll tell you a really crazy story at the end of this that you, well, uh, uh, were clearly talking to the right man to tell this story in front of. 
But then I started to write a little list of where I wanted to be in the world because I was nowhere. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. I was nothing at that point. Or in my head, I was nothing. Uh, so I started to write down where I wanted to be. And, you know, it's really important that we are with people that make us feel alive. And Robin Williams, actually, when he, when he passed, they put this brilliant quote of his up. And it was, uh, oh, I used to think that the worst thing in life was to end up all alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people who make you feel all alone. And I knew I could not stay where I was. I mean, yes, I was lonely and I was grief stricken and angry and all that. But I knew I had to move myself from where I was to where I wanted to be. So I got another sheet of paper and I wrote down the kind of people that I wanted to be with. And, you know, I'm, I'm quite conceived by the paintings in the house. I'm quite creative. So I wrote down that I wanted to be with creative people that were funny, that went to nice places and took me with them and that dressed in a particular way and that were kind and accepted me and didn't batter me because of this voice. And I wrote it all down very, very clearly. I also wrote down the job that I wanted. Now, you've got to understand that at that time, I had earned millions but it was a million years away from me because I was actually only, only on 57 pounds a week, single parent family allowance in the UK. So I was, I was on, on benefits at that time. I was absolutely penniless. So I wrote down the kind of people I wanted to be with, what they'd make me feel like, which was alive, not lonely, they had my humor. Then I wrote down the job and it's crazy, but I, I mean, I was just, I was just a girl on the, a single parent on the door, but I wrote down, I drive a black BMW, it's got a personalised number plate, I fly to work, I meet really interesting people, I'm one of the top people in the country for what I do, because I felt that that would feed me self-esteem, um, and I earn £25,000 a year. Now that was a thought, that's like me saying to you this year, Mike, I'm going to earn 27 billion. It was like a million miles away. Wow. Um, just, just a few pennies less. And when me and, oh, and the house, I described the house that I wanted to live in because that's very much part of how you express yourself. All the things that I'm talking about is an expression of the personality that other people relate to. So, um, and this is God's honest truth. Um, I came out of the hairdressers in Home Firth where I live, oh, about 10 years ago now, and I saw this house for sale. It is an exact description of what I'd written down. And when me and my son, Danny, who is now 24, moved into this house, he was carrying some boxes and a sheet of paper fell out of the box. And I promise you, this is what happened. I, uh, I had my first job and, my, and then my second job after a year was for a company called Attic. On the first day, I should have been driving a Mazda. When I turned up, and this is God's honest truth, they said, sorry, the Mazda's gone, we've sold it. All we've got is a black BMW. It's got a personalised number plate though, A5TTK, drive it if you want. Within six weeks, I was flying to Ireland and Europe and to the States doing business with some of the biggest companies in the world using the, the, the communication techniques that I'd learned on the market, modifying them, reapplying them to working on the phone and going and sitting in front of people. Um, and uh, I was, oh, they started me off on 25,000 a year and we live in that house. And that is God's honest truth. And the people I met made me feel as much alive as I have ever done in my life. So Nick, that's the benchmark. Wow, that is so exciting. I'm inspired. What was the piece of paper? Was it the piece of paper that you had written these things down? It was the piece of paper. Uh, this isn't it. Uh, it was the piece of paper that I'd written that oh, night. Oh, 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 the oh. job I wanted and the people I wanted to be around, bearing in mind that I'd cleared everything negative that I'd been told about myself. I'd then on paper, I had to rewrite everything and decide where little Nikki wanted to be. <laughs> 
in the world. And how long after you wrote it from the time you manifested it? Was, if my math is right, is it 10 years? No, uh, the night I, I, from after writing it, I was just shy of two years before the first job came, and then one year before the uh, the job with the BMW came. So just all in all, about two and a half, three years. Jeez. Well, there's a couple of things in your story that I find so electrifying and thrilling and confirming. That you know everything I teach. Um, is about being a deliberate creator, a conscious creator. Um, thoughts become things is the end all be all for whatever our heart desires. And so the two step process to get anything into your life, ethereal or material is number one, have an end result, the dream, a goal. And number two, show up, show up, take action, show up. <clears throat> you know, in my playing the matrix, I squeeze in a third step because I change step one and two, make it general. Make your end result general, and then step two, the extra step, is get excited about it with the details, then show up, show up. Your end results were beautiful for me because you mentioned the kind of people you want to be around. You know, I've never even heard of anybody who put that down as an end result, but for the reasons we enumerate, so that you don't end up being surrounded by people who make you feel alone, so that you're not, in fact, physically alone. Um, the only way, and that's a general end result, amazing people that, that thrill you, okay? It's general because you're not saying who those people must be. You're not saying Robin Williams or John Doe or so-and-so must be my best friends. You're saying, I want people who thrill me, and the universe is like, I know who will thrill you. And so, number one, you're leaving latitude to the universe to find those right people. But that end result implies that you've got to have enough going on in your life, dots being connected, um, doors being knocked upon, um, progress being made with success for there to be some kind of a match. So to meet those kind of people means the universe has to force other components of your life into place. Your other end results were... Um, what were they the second after meeting the right kind of people and, and then the third one was oh the traveling i just wanted to go on planes i still love planes i just wanted to go on planes i don't know why i just like airports I've yeah. worked with you. well so the, this is a great confirmation the end results when they're big enough and general enough they will organize the circumstances the right people the right time the epiphanies the courage the creativity that you will meet as you physically show up, show up, show up. So how did you do the show up part? Uh, you've got great end results going on right now. You didn't wait at home for Neil Diamond to knock on the front door. No, absolutely. Although it'll probably be in a minute, to be honest. There's, there's another point there just before we go on to that, but the people you need in your life change as your life changes. So, you know, we very rarely these days I mean, I am friends with a lot of my old friends from school, you know, from even from junior school. But you, you, you're always meeting new people, new groups of people, then you'll find another interest or need some other fulfillment in your life. So you'll meet other people. So you're always recreating different groups of people because that's part of our evolution. And the thing is, you know, they've got this saying, haven't they, that you learn about other people when you meet. You don't learn about other people. It's not as important. The thing is that when you meet different groups of people, you learn more about yourself. <laughs> and that's yes. the most amazing thing. You know, you can watch telly, you can watch a documentary and learn about other people. When you learn from groups of people, you're actually learning about yourself. And the more people that you've got that are interesting, the more components of you come out, you know, because you get more confidence and, you know, you have conversations that bring more of you out and more hobbies that bring more of you out. So it's you, it's you that's expanding. And as we all know, we live in an ever Am I going like that? With, am I hypnotizing everybody? I'll put You're that doing good. Down. <laughs> everybody will be like that. Um, and as we know, you know, we live in an ever expanding universe. So that if our friendship groups aren't expanding, part of us will feel contracted and uncomfortable. 
So that's quite an interesting point. And also, Mike, we're pack animals. At the end of the day, we're pack animals. We have to get out of bed and go and find our pack. That's part of just being humanity. Absolutely. We are all people, people. Um, so well, well done. And I love to be a point our friends change and our, need, our need, <coughs> needs amongst our friends change, which doesn't mean you have to wash them all out. But, you know, we need to evolve and let there be room for the evolu evolution of who's in our life and, and who completes us. So tell us a little bit about going out into the world, making these connections. Oh, Nikki, are you there? I uh, have a frozen screen. Hello? Uh, hello, hello. Nikki, can you hear me? Nikki, can you hear me? Okay. Uh oh. Well, folks, uh, hang on. Uh, I will get Nikki back. Um, I'm going to turn off this recording really quickly, and we will see. Uh, what the deal is. So hang on and within five minutes we will be back in swing.